The Kranvong, one of the best holdown tanks in the game, if not maybe the best. I'm going to be taking you through everything that you need to know to get started in this tank and to perform as well as you possibly can. I'll be going through the equipment, the crew skills, the consumables, the ammo loadout, absolutely everything to get you started and to get you gaming in the Kran. Let's begin. So first things first, we're going to go from left to right here, starting off with the crew. Now one thing that I'm going to mention is that each one of these crew members is exactly the same from the tier 8 onwards. So from when you get the heavy tank at the ML1, the crew stays exactly the same, which is a blessing considering other tanks. I'm looking at you, the E5 line. But what crew skills do you want? Well, besides rubbers and arms, obviously, um, you want to have that as your first skill. If you can get a zero skill crew, then it is even better. And then you get brothers and arms for free, basically. Besides that, you want to obviously have situational awareness and recon, which is going to help you out massively. That is on the commander. So make sure that you are well aware of that, that you need to get situational awareness trained on the commander and not, let's say, the gun or the driver or anything like that. That is the person that becomes the radio operator, is the commander. From there, obviously being a heavy tank, you want to have repairs, repairs on absolutely everything. After that, it's kind of down to you what you want to do with the tank. I would recommend that you get the off-road driving perk as well as the snapshot and smooth ride because that is going to help you out dramatically, especially after the nerfs. It's going to boost that dispersion values when you're on the move and in you know close quarters combat and whatnot so that it's a lot nicer to actually play with. So definitely snapshot and smooth ride for me, but from there, it's kind of down to you. So equipment for this tank, and there is one equipment setup that is needed. If you choose anything else, it's wrong. Like, I'm sorry, I don't care. Like HP, turbo, stab. If you can get a stab directive, even better. Because this thing, when it got nerfed, it got nerfed quite hard. The best thing about the Kran is that you can use the left hand field mod with HP boost and you will still have over that 400 HP track health so you're not going to get one shot by 120mm guns. So some people have been asking me, and I'm going to make a full video on this very, very soon, probably this week, um, on when can you use the left-hand field mod on heavy tanks and when can't you use it because of the track health. And if you don't know, HP boost actually increases the track health, which is the main reason why most people run it, is to not get tracked in the first shot, because otherwise you might as well be using something else. It's very, very simple to find out if you will be tracked in the first shot. All that you have to look for is this track health here. And if it says 300 or more, then you can run HP boost with the left hand field mod. As you can see here, when we choose the left hand field mod, it goes down to 270. But if we then choose hardening, it goes to 445. For example, if you run an IS-7 and you want to choose the left hand field mod, which you kind of need to, it's going to be a problem because when you use hardening, it only goes to 371, which is going to get tracked in one shot by 120mm guns and higher. Even if you use the almighty Bond HP, you still run the risk of getting tracked in one shot, which means that you should never, ever, ever select the left-hand field mod on the IS-7, even though that it makes you go faster. It's just not worth it. For next piece of equipment, obviously you want to have turbo on this thing. As long as you have off-road driving, you're going to be at 50 no matter what. Um, apart from soft terrain, which doesn't come up too much in game. As long as you have off-road driving, you're using food, and then you have a turbo, you're going to be hitting that 50 km an hour on medium and hard terrain, um, no matter where you go. So turbo and is just a must, um, the same as HP, which then leaves stab, which again is a must, because the dispersion on this thing is awful. At least until you put a stab on it with maybe a stab directive. Um, when they nerfed this thing, they nerfed it pretty hard in the gun department and the dispersion became pretty bad. So even after the nerf, it's still playable, it's still good, but it's not what it used to be. And the stab helps it out quite a bit. Before anyone asks, no, I don't see any way of you putting vents on this tank. Um, it, it needs turbo to go fast enough to be competitive. And if you're going at 45, you're just a bit too slow sometimes. Um, not all the time, but most of the time. And it's not even just about going slower. It's also about the engine power. Like the turbo helps out massively with the engine power. You know, you're going at 20 specific power to weight, which is very, very good. 
You know, you're getting plus 2.12 from the uh, bounty turbocharger there. So I don't see any way of you putting vents on this thing. There's no way you're dropping the HP and there's no way you're dropping turbo. And there's definitely no way you're dropping stab. So this is the way that you should be setting your tank up if you want to be as competitive as possible. Let's now move into the ammo loadout. And I mean, for this, it's going to be pretty simple. The heat rounds are just flat out better. And most of the time, you're going to be wanting to fire them. However, the APCR rounds are nice to fire against people, obviously, for, you know, doing tracking damage or just if they're softly armored, um, where heat is going to be kind of more of an issue. But most of the time, you're going to be firing heat in this thing. It's just the way it is. If you don't like it, then it's unfortunate. I wouldn't suggest you play this tank. I wouldn't suggest you play the game if you don't like gold rounds. But there you go. And yes, of course, you could, you know, go and fire like this, for example. No one's stopping you. But if you want to be the best that you can be, then I would take something like either something like this, maybe even this at most. But I take 1236 because the heat's just good. And then obviously for consumables, you want to be running a repair kit large one if you can um, i just run small med kits and then food because yeah now for the field mods on this tank as spoken previously you go with the left hand field mod even if you are using hp boost you go for the left hand field mod for number four because aiming is always going to be better than the aim speed so make sure you get this down as much as you can always 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 aim circle size over aim time for number five Give yourself some more view range for free basically um, yes it will increase the stun duration by 10 percent but let's be honest even if the stun duration is say 20 seconds that 10 percent is only two seconds which you're not really going to notice too much for number seven I, I like to do mo focus on mobility but you could honestly choose either of them it doesn't really matter which one you choose i prefer mobility especially now after the nerf because you only go backwards at 18 even with this and if you chose the firepower, you only go back at 12, which is very slow in reverse. I would rather choose the mobility because you're not really going to notice that extra one second reload time um, overall with the clip. This is only really useful for times when you're playing like ultra competitive modes. Like I would only really use this if you're going to be using this in say like onslaught or something like that because other than that i wouldn't even bother i would say the top reverse speed is much more helpful and then number eight there is only one choice here the heavyweight gun like by far left hand side always it increases your hit points and decreases the aim circle size after firing which just makes this tank so much nicer to play it is night and day the difference so no you should never choose aim speed as we already mentioned aim speed bad but heavyweight gun 100%. So let's now just take a quick look at the armor layout before we head into some games. As you can see, this thing is, yes, it's just a god tier heavy tank on the ridge line. If we go to a live model, you'll see if it goes and uses all of its gun depression, which it gets a lovely 12 degrees, as you can see here, there's not a lot that can pen it. Even a Yapanzi E100 firing heat, you're not really going to be going through that. As you can see, this is against a Yapanzi E100 firing heat you are not going through this reliably. But obviously that is using its all of its gun depression as it goes a little bit more of a normal angle, let's say, around about maybe here. You can kind of go through it, um, especially underneath the gun as well. Uh, underneath the gun is a pretty easy shot right there, but you're going to need 400 millimeters of pen. So that's not going through with a normal tank, is it? <laughs> now, what I'm going to be doing from here is going against an S-Conk firing APCR. And as you can see, good luck, right? Just good luck. And the thing about the crown is that it will go all the way and hide its capolas just by looking up. So if it's looking up, what are you meant to pen? That there is nothing here that you can pen if you're in an S conch. Even if you're, you know, on flat ground with it. That's a 33 point well, 34% chance of going through underneath the gun. If you can't see the hull armor, remember, like there is no way you're penning this thing. However, one thing that really does annoy Cran players is when they are using their gun depression to shoot down on you. And let's say that you're about here, and then you use HE with an S-Conk, and then you go and pen their Capola. It really annoys them. Um, 
I'm not saying that you should try this. I'm just saying that you can do this. I've even done it in a badger, which is lovely. So yes, the Kran armor is unpenable, unless you're in a badger with HE. Lastly, one thing I do want to mention is that it can reverse side scrape extremely well, more than you would think. Um, as you can see here, if we go like this, every single part of this is a ricochet. The one thing that you need to watch out for though, is that the engine deck doesn't get penned because that is an overmatch. You're only looking at 18 millimeters of armor, which means that basically any tank that you meet will overmatch that engine deck. Um, as well as HE will go through the rear of this thing like butter. So keep an eye out for that. If they do get around the back of you, it's only 39 millimeters thick, which means any HE in the game pretty much that you're going to be meeting will be able to pen you. Anyway, let's go play some games. Okay, so here we are on Corellia. Now, I was debating whether or not to go up north, but I don't really think that's worth it. So we're going to go down here. There is two artillery, which is kind of annoying, but we should be uh, should be able to play here pretty reliably. I mean, I'm just going to be playing a little bit passively because it's not really worth me pushing up, I don't think. I and mean, as you can see, I7 here, just bombing it forwards. Uh, yeah, no, this is definitely not worth me uh, trying to push this. But we might be able to get a shot off on someone that is a little bit delayed if they uh, come around the corner. Obviously, we have APCR loaded right now, ready. And especially for the tracking shots, if we can. Uh, we don't get spotted for that. There we go. We can get some nice shot shots in here. Wonderful. It's exactly why we wanted uh, APCR loaded for those uh, side shots. Now, we're probably going to be needing heat against the E4. And you may be wondering why I haven't gone down here. Artillery, honestly. That's the only reason why. If artillery wasn't in this game, then I would go down there um, and try and play hold down. But it's not really worth it. Uh, okay, hello FE. Is he getting pushed? I don't... I honestly don't know if he was getting pushed or not. It looked like he was getting pushed. So, I mean, unfortunately, I don't know by who. And I usually wouldn't even bother shooting them, but everyone else is going to shoot him, so... It's not really, you know... It's not really worth me not shooting that. Uh... Interesting. Alright, time to load heat. Time to load heat. And just wait here for a second. I mean, our team is defending the base, I guess you could say. Not the most accurate tank in the game. <laughs> Mind you, that is very far away. Ah, Mr. S. Conk. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us. I would like to pen you if I can, but... There we go. Unfortunate. Nah, not quite. But that's fine. We're okay. We're in a decent position at the moment. We got 2.2k. Uh, we still have one of our hit points. So we are looking good. Um, I don't really know what to aim for, to be honest with this thing. Also, how's the marks looking? Uh, they've stayed roughly the same. I'm not going to go up or down any more than usual. It's kind of interesting that I get spotted there. Is he there? I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing there's someone there behind that. Yeah. Hmm. 
Fair enough. Mr. Leo, you're going to go back up there? Come on. Go back up. Do you reckon he'll go back up? I reckon he'll go back up. Let's see. He's just going to poke and swap me. I could wait and just... I could reload APCR for him, but it's not really worth it, to be honest. I really want to move forwards. Oh, hello, Mr. E4. Oh, wow. Okay. That wasn't the uh, best of shots. E4 just fired, though. See, I didn't want to go and... Uh, Expose myself too much to E4. Especially my hull armor, because that is just going to be like paper to him. No matter what he fires, even if it's just AP. Nice. The Leo one peak now. Wow, really? That's impressive, to be honest. We'll go for a reload. I mean, we're kind of just stuck, which is what Krellia is. You win a flank and then you lose a flank. Like, they can't push us, we can't push them. It's a uh, well-designed map. No, no other map plays like this. <laughs> Definitely don't have free corridors and then... Uh, once you win a flank, you then can't push. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm going to go around. See if I can kill this 907. I can also go hold down on a little corner bit. Now the S-Conk dies. There's also like the Minotauro, STRV, still over this way. I'm just going to launch our gun up in the air just to see if we can spot. I need to go backwards. There we go. Okay. That's very, very good. We didn't get spotted, which is excellent. Now, the problem here is I want to just spot, you know, the people that are crossing here. But I don't know where they are. Like, I don't know what the STRV is doing. He could be on the hill. Okay. Okay. Nice. Very, very good. The I-7 wants to push it. I don't. That's death. Like, that is... I mean, the Leo 1's on low health. We also don't know where the Griller is. The I-7 should be able to hold that. Where's the Mino gone? <laughs> Hello, Mino! <laughs> I want to ping it and then I can shoot it. Wherever he is. The gorilla killed the STRV. Which means the gorilla's like over here somewhere, I think. Oh no, the gorilla could be in the middle, actually. Alright, the gorilla's probably in the middle then. Alright, we're gonna load uh, APCR now. Um, I can't overmatch the STRV, can I? No, no, I can't. But heat's gonna be a problem anyway, so that's fine. Alright, I'm now gonna push forwards, see if we can spot the uh, STRV. Okay, gun. Instantly reload that as well. Caught 
put my gun up just because. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh. What a lovely class. Gorilla 15 got killed by the SDRV. The SDRV is still in the same place then. I can't even push this now. Because the problem is if I take one from the Gorilla and then one from the SDRV, I'm dead. These Zeds up there. I mean, I have to do something, man. I'm going for a reload. I shouldn't have bothered even loading two shells. I want to push forwards. If I die, I die. Gorilla's up here as well. I should really look. I should really take like one HE round, a clip. First thing I'm gonna do is kill this VZ. If we can even catch him, Jesus. Oh my God. Jesus. With a damaged gun, that's awful. Also, how did the IS-7 survive that? What is this SDRV doing? How are you unspotted? I just spotted you a second ago. Sir? Where have you gone? Actual magician. Alright, there we go. So we get 4.3k out of that. Uh, 1.7k assistance. Very, very nice. Um, I'll tell you what I am going to do. I am going to take one clip of that. and So it'll be like this. Yeah, this is yeah, this is a more overall ammo loadout, let's say. Because yeah, that HE clip would have been quite nice against the gorilla. Even though we didn't get to use it, it still would have been quite nice um to know that we have it. Like we have 60 pen, which isn't too bad. Um and it could also pen itself if it shoots it in the back of the uh the tank. Hmm. Anyway, one more game. Okay, well we're now on Pilsen. So we're gonna go to the left hand side. Uh, we'll keep APCR loaded for now, I believe. What I want to do is hopefully we can get there early enough and then see if anyone's going to be crossing into E1. Because if you can do that, then you can get some easy early damage. Especially if you can track them. Um, you crans fast enough most of the time to get into positions. Oh my god. Interesting. I mean... I don't really know what he was doing. To be honest. I do want to cross though. I should have just probably crossed earlier, but I didn't know if... Uh... My god, this gun sometimes, man. Yeah, this gun is very derpy. Just gonna fire once more and then get out. Go on the reload. I'm gonna get one of this Rhino. I mean, if it's fully aimed, it's not too bad, but it's really derpy. Like, even even when it's fully aimed sometimes. I 
I want uh, heat loaded. I also didn't want to have like random shells, so that's the reason why we um, waited so long. But get heat loaded. The only problem with heat on this tank with 300 heat, it's it can go through the rhino, but not ultra reliably. Oh my god! <laughs> oh man! This gun is... I don't know. I don't know what it's doing in this game. We have to push this now, as well, now that they've pushed. Oh, please don't one-shot me. I remember what I said about reverse side scraping. I don't know what's going on in this game. I don't I really don't. There we go. Finally. Nice. And this is okay at the moment. IS-4 can protect me. Like, frontally, he's a lot stronger than I am. As you can see. I mean, th this guy is useless up here, by the way. <laughs> I don't know why you would go there in a... You know, an assault TD, but... There you go. Nothing I can do against him either. I have HE loaded for this time. Man, come on. I need this IS-4 to start playing the game. Go forwards. There's nothing I can do here. I needed this IS-4 to actually play the game. He was way too passive to do this. Especially when, like, when the TNH is on reload and the runners on reload, he should just be killing these. But they can't pen him frontally. Not easily. Yep, 3k damage is top in tier 10, which should never happen. I mean, let's be honest, the real reason why we lost this is because of this guy. Like, if he had, if he was with us, we'd probably win this. Like, if even if he just sat behind us, just waiting for the enemy. Like, this guy is... He was useless to our team. And obviously, he's not experienced in the game. Like, sure, his account was created in 2013, so he probably Johnny just came back. But, like, sitting at the back there, that is useless. <laughs> like, just looking through his account, it's, it looks like what my account looked like when I just... Decided to return to the game. He has a few tier 10s, but not really any experience in them. But yeah, this, the tier 9 WZTD is very, very powerful. Like especially in that kind of scenario. I also shouldn't have bothered firing HE at the WT. Like, there was no reason to do it. Like, there's no point. Because I'm not going to get a full clip off. I mean, I was hoping to, but I'm not going to in that scenario. Um, yeah, if we had loaded APCR, we would have been able to probably kill the TNH or the Rhino. But yeah, I needed I needed the IS-4 to play a little bit more like, aggressively, because he was so passive in it. 
even when the TNH was on reload. Like, and the Rhino and TNH have like super long reloads. But he could have easily just come around the corner and killed them. And just kept like digging away at their HP. I'm pretty sure. Were they, were they firing AP? Uh, the TNH was firing APCR. I have no idea what the Rhino was firing. But even if TNH is firing APCR, that's still not an easy pen on the IS-4. But yeah, it doesn't really matter. That's the crown. You're not really going to win when the rest of your team fails on a, on a different flank. Like, even if we had won that, it still would have probably been a loss because the rest of the map was gone. But that is the crown vong. Hopefully you learned something from this. Obviously, I would have liked to have got Westfield or something like that, where you can just go hold down. But, you know, it's going to be pretty boring. To be honest like you just go hold down no one can pen you you point your gun up in the air and then that's it like nothing can pen you when you point your gun up in the air and you're on the ridge line it's, it's got a much better turret than the chieftain like a much better turret than the chieftain the only downside to this tank is the gun honestly uh the gun lets you down quite a lot as you saw um especially if in some games the gun just decides it doesn't want to hit anything but it is pretty easy to rack up damage in this thing especially if you are close quarters um, which most of the time you are if you're a heavy tank so yeah it's pretty decent and i honestly don't see why like the marks are so low on this tank because they really didn't destroy it that hard like this went from being maybe like what was it 4.8 or so but i think it was around about 4.7 4.8 and now it's down to 4k like th this thing got nerfed but it didn't get nerfed as hard as people were making out. Like, it's still the same tank. It's just a bit slower. Like, it's... I don't know. I, th I think a lot of people... Like, overlook this tank now, sometimes. But yeah, a lot of people aren't playing this tank very well. And I don't really know how or why. Because I should definitely not be at 97% with 4.4k on this tank. But I feel this tank should be around about 4.5k still. Because it is very, very good. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. What you think about the crown. Whether it's still busted OP. Or if it is quite bad now. Either way, thank you very much for watching. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, then you want to do. And have a very good rest of your day.